And just like that, we're back, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. So my dad died on May 6, 2021. It's nearly been two years. And the last two years have been the hardest two years of my life. There's not a day that goes by where I don't think about my dad and, and how much I miss him and how much I love him. And he was just an absolutely incredible human. It's pretty hard to talk about, but my dad had a truck. He had a 1969 GMC truck. And what makes this truck even more special is that my grandpa on my mom's side, my mom's dad actually owned this truck as well. So my grandpa owned it, my dad owned it, I learned how to drive in this truck, I drove it to high school, and we sold the truck. For the last 18 months, I've been trying to track down this truck, and I think I found it. I'm pretty sure I found it, I could be wrong, I'm more than likely wrong. When I say I think I found it, I have, I have a shot in the dark. But uh, it was last registered in Baldwinville, Massachusetts. So we're gonna fly to Boston today, and we're gonna try to get this truck and we're gonna try to bring it home. Now the details on my dad's truck are a little bit hazy. I wanna say we sold it in maybe 2008, 2009. I was in college at the time, so I don't actually remember the transaction. My dad sold the truck for $500. Like this truck was nothing special 15 years ago. And a year after he sold it, the Oregon State Police actually called him because they found the truck abandoned and broken down on the side of the road. Whoever my dad sold it to never took the time to actually register the vehicle in their name, so it was still registered in my dad's name. I'm assuming $500, like it wasn't worth a couple hundred dollars to register it. That's actually the last time we heard about this truck. Looking at DMV records, Carfax records, it was registered in Baldwinville, Massachusetts in 2014. Now that was nine years ago. So in the last nine years, I mean, who knows what happened, but we're not gonna know until we know. I'm trying to concisely describe what we were up to. All I have is an address. I don't have a name, I don't have a phone number. Uh, I don't even have a confirmation that anybody even lives at this address, that this address even really exists. We're gonna show up and, and presumably Knock on the door and I don't know. The truck game here at Baby Burlackers has leveled up the brand new Shelby. Now, unfortunately, he is selling the Raptor, but the new Shelby is 10 of 10. Well, good morning, sunshine. What's up? Where are we going? Look at that first class smile. You know where we're going. That's because I got good seats. That's how I roll. I'm sitting last row, middle seat. Yeah, life choices. Massachusetts. So we got to drive about an hour and a half to Baldwinville, which means we need a cool car. Ladies and gentlemen, check out the Alpha 4C. We're about five miles away and I'm trying to calculate all the different scenarios in my head right now. Either A, we get there and the truck is outside and that makes it easy. We knock on the door, it's a nice old grandma, we buy the truck and we're on our way. There's so many other different scenarios. We get there, they might not be home. We get there, they are home, they have a no trespassing sign on their door. They also might not be willing to sell the truck. But then also, maybe the truck's in the backyard, maybe the truck's in the garage, we have no way to know. We have reached the actual street. This is kind of what I expected. Like, is this not the most Massachusetts street you've ever seen in your entire life? So one of these houses, um, hmm, where is it? It's a nice little neighborhood. What do we do now? You just knock. <laughs> That's terrifying. Just knock. I'm a millennial. You don't just knock, sure. there's, I'm trying to see what's in the backyard. They got, they have a lot of General Motors. They got a Tahoe, they got a Buick. I'm nervous right now, I'm trying to rehearse my lines. Okay, so I knock on the door, what do I say? Hi, my name is James. I'm selling encyclopedias. No. <laughs> I don't know what to, that's what they're gonna think. They're gonna think I'm a door-to-door -door sales guy. Do you guys own a 1969 GMC pickup truck? Is that is that what I lead to? But then, is that creepy because I know, but if they, I don't. It's gonna be weird, if, as long as you accept that, you say whatever you Oh, it's say. definitely gonna be weird. Now, obviously, for a variety of reasons, you guys, are gonna stay in the car. I'm gonna go with my phone, I'm gonna leave it by my hips, you guys can kinda like, at least listen in on the conversation. But the last thing we wanna do is knock on a door holding a camera. Probably not the right look. No. You like it out here, don't you? It's pleasant. <laughs> kind of not a big surprise, nobody answered the door, but uh, they have a bunch of old trucks. I, I, this is definitely the right spot. We just noticed that right behind that house, there is a used car dealership and there's like classic cars everywhere. We stopped by the car dealership down the hill and they actually happen to know the owner of my dad's truck. So they actually gave me his phone number. We're gonna give him a call. They did warn me, he never sells anything. No we, there's no cert, we're on SOS right now. We are, when I say we are in the absolute middle of nowhere, like nowhere's right here, we're right there. I think Baldwinville and Verizon, they just don't have an agreement. He's obviously not gonna pick up. I wouldn't pick up. I never pick up. If I see a phone number and I don't recognize, I don't pick up. Do you? I do. Really? It's a landline. Is it a landline? It's the only explanation. Cell phones don't ring this much. 
Your call has been forwarded to an automatic... I am inquiring about a 1969 GMC pickup truck that my late father used to own for about 30 years. I was just interested to see if you quite possibly still own that truck. And if so, I'd love to talk to you about it. If you could give me a call back, my phone number is... I'm currently staying in Massachusetts area, in the Boston area. Yeah, if you could give me a call back, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Genuinely impressed. Did you hear how professional I sounded on the phone? I didn't know you could do that. My heart is... I used to work for you. <laughs> I, I was your go-to guy on the phone when I worked for you. Yes, I was. Remember all the, remember the conference calls? It's a truth. Tell them it's true. You've grown a lot since I then. I have. I think we might be completely out of luck. And so to celebrate... Are you okay, bro? You fine? KFC will do the trick, right? Chicken quesadilla? Yo quiero Taco Bell. I guess we've reached a dead end. I'm not really sure what else to do. We knocked on his door. I left him a voicemail. I sent him a text message. Fun fact, the first Kentucky Fried Chicken was in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's right. On a scale of 1 to 10, how was it? It's Taco Bell. The real question is, how are we going to feel in 35 minutes? Yep. <clears throat> I'm thinking a handwritten note and a photo of the truck with me in it, right? So you buy a pen, buy a paper, print a picture. Yes. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. Hi Dan, my name is James and I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. I believe you might own a 1969 GMC truck that was a part of my family for several decades. If you sold the truck, I'd be very interested and grateful for any information on its whereabouts. Thank you so much. And then we're gonna leave this photo as well. Good job. You helped with that, give yourself some credit. We, we did good. We did it together. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? You do it? I got it done. That's nerve wracking. Like just going up to a house on a random street in Baldwinville, Massachusetts. That's we used to ever... live where you knocked before you texted somebody. I know. That's how things were done back then. Yeah. I was a lot more brave as a <laughs> five-year-old. Yeah. Hopefully someday, one day, we are back in Baldwinville, Massachusetts. Just not today. But you know what? That's part of the hunt, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if you if you heard my voicemail, but still, do you still own the truck? We just got the call. We are running back to Baldwinville. We're headed back. I like it there in Baldwinville. Honestly, Dan seemed extremely nice on the phone. He has the truck. We have confirmed he has the truck. This is crazy. I'm kind of speechless right now. Yeah, you start talking. I'm very excited and happy for you, but I'm also like, my back, my knee, my oh, body. Oh, you're fine. I'm fine. <laughs> what about me? No, no, no. We Life's not about an burlacker. That's another hour in this tiny thing. Why so that? Look at that snow plow. That Why is so that? cool. That's what do you, you think need. that's for sale? Well, we're back for round two. Now I'm gonna leave you guys in the car because the last thing I wanna do is show up to his house, put a camera in his face. I, I don't even know what to expect whatsoever. So we're just gonna kind of chill. There's a truck parked right there. That's not it, is it? Is that it? That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Nope, that's not it. Oh, okay. He used to call it. That's the way it is. That's so cool. Dude, I've had that for What was Well, you could take that stuff with you if you want. Yeah, that'd be amazing. My mom, she still lives there. Really? That address, yeah. We got it. We got it. I just bought my dad's old truck. I wasn't even going to try to negotiate. So we actually got to come back tomorrow because... We got, we got to pay for it because can it's uh, 5 o'clock. Can we get a different car than this? No, Please. you're fine. I you're fine. This is a special moment. Oh, Thank you. Awesome. Okay, you see, I was, I, was fishing. I was fishing for that. That's incredible. I can't, my, I when mean, my mom it. finds out, she is going to be so excited. We actually found registration documents in the glove box with my dad's name on it. That is wild. Obviously, we couldn't really film. Nick got some behind-the-scenes uh, iPhone footage, but I can't believe we came out here and we got it. Yesterday when we were looking at the truck, I was being very, very low key because obviously we just showed up at Dan's house. He has absolutely no idea who we are. We weren't gonna like shove a camera in his face. I didn't wanna be rude, I didn't wanna be intrusive. So I'm hoping we can have a conversation with Dan and, and maybe try to film the truck a little bit better today, but we'll kinda sorta of see, we're gonna fill it out. Well, we just got permission to film and here she is, ladies and gentlemen, the 1969 GMC truck. It is still wearing the organ plate as well. It is so surreal, like I didn't think we'd actually see it. I'm to find it shocked in Baldwinville, Massachusetts. So I, I talked to my mom last night. We actually sold this truck in 2005. So it has been out of the family for 18 years. 
we actually found it. This is one of the coolest parts about the truck is this little Bob Thomas keychain. So when I was in high school, Bob Thomas was the local Chevrolet dealership in Bend, Oregon. You can see the address right there. I would imagine more than likely my dad put this on the key. He probably got a part, he probably got serviced, and he put this on the key. That is so insane. So of course it has the four speed manual transmission. Oh, every time. That's crazy. Wow. The funny thing about this truck when we had it, it was always the most reliable truck in the family. All the other cars were always breaking, but she was old reliable. She gonna hold idle? Beefy, beefy. It sounds a lot better than when we had it, but I would wonder, what would a V10 sound like? Oh. I said too much. This will probably sound a little bit dumb. Even the sound of the door opening and closing, and then it was always such a pain getting the door to open, so. That's how it was. That's right? how it was. This is literally how it was. Nothing has changed. I remember when I was younger, this would happen all the time on the passenger door, in which we'd be making like a right hand turn. The door would swing open, and I'd be trying to shut it. And my dad would have to like come to a stop, get out of the truck, and shut the door. Because as much as I love this truck, it was always kind of a. Well, I remember <laughs> kicking this door open, like being in the driver's seat, oh. not being able to get out, and just kicking it. You broke it 30 years <laughs> yeah, ago. Yeah, 30 That's years ago. Happened. You got it. Easy, just a little persuasion it's, right there. You see, okay. now okay. you know what it was like. I drove yeah. this truck to high school every single day. Me showing up to high school in this, I was I was just the coolest kid in the entire world. <laughs> you were. I'm yes, not yes. This is this is what I drove. All the other kids are driving yes. fancy, fancy trucks. But this thing is gonna be so sick to have back in the family. Whoa, 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 that sounds actually good. That sounds really healthy. You, you gotta just drive tack. this baby back? Let's just drive it back. Oh yeah, it's got the tag, look at that. Sounds good. Before we blow it up, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe shut her, maybe shut her off, you know. <laughs> I have to admit, I, I'm starting to get a little bit emotional. The biggest thing that this truck represents is the sacrifice that my dad made. My dad drove this beat up truck to work for 20 years. He could have bought a new vehicle for himself, but he sacrificed everything to support his wife and his kids and so that all of his kids could have a better life than he did. And this thing, this thing is such a, it is, especially when he sold it, such a piece of junk. I just remember him driving it to work every single day and, and you know everybody else that he worked with had a nicer vehicle and a fancier vehicle, a brand new vehicle and here my dad is driving this thing around and, and letting his kids take it to high school and, and he would walk to work or he would bike to work and oh, I just, the last two years have been so hard and there's not a day that goes by I don't think about them and I don't know it's just Cars is what, what connected us. Like my, my passion for cars stems exactly from my dad, directly from my dad. And uh, it's just, it's so cool to have it back in the family. I know my mom is gonna be so excited to see it. I know, I know for her it's brought back so many memories. So I just wanna thank the owner, Dan, for selling me the truck because we kind of we kind of knocked on his door unannounced, showed up out of nowhere, and, and he's had the truck actually for a long time. I think he's had it for about nine years and uh, so I just want to thank him for, for selling the truck back to me and I can't wait I can't wait to get it home. It is not good crying on camera, jeez. <sighs> Tell your mom and dad you love him. That's that's all I can say. I miss my dad so so much. He was such an incredible human and <sighs> I just I just wish he could be here. It would be so cool for him to see this truck. Like, I mean, the stories him and my mom would have, I, I can't even begin to imagine the stories they would have. We're gonna turn this truck into something epic. I don't know exactly what. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think some kind of resto mod would be amazing. Uh, you know, putting a Lamborghini V10 would be incredible. I don't know, or maybe we return it to stock. I, I don't know what to do, but uh, I just, I, just I, I, I can't believe, I can't believe we found it. Like, shot in the dark. The fact that this thing, left Oregon back in 2005, ended up here in Massachusetts, and, and here we are.